All right, what's up, team? I'm just going to get right into it because my batteries on this Zoom recorder are going to die. Um, I'm in a hotel in Chicago, um, opening up for Tim. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I just wanted to get this done so I could keep the streak going. This is number three. <sighs> That's two more than I thought I would have done, so... We'll see. We'll see how far this goes. It was cool. This, we did six shows so far. Um, I would say I had like two where I really thought I did well. And, you know, I'm, I'm starting up the show cold, so it's tough. I'm um, realizing I need to like really take the time to work on some new material. I feel like I've been falling back on some of the old stuff. But, yeah, it was cool. Some girl DM me last night like, oh, my God, you were great. And I was like, do you just think like... Are you just like attracted to me, which is cool, but I'm like, really? And she was like, no, me and my family, well, I didn't say that, but I was like, ah, you know, it was all right. And she was like, no, me and my family were in tears. And I'm like, yeah, right, dude. <laughs> I mean, that's like the goal, right? But yeah, I just, I don't know if that's self-doubt or, I mean, I just felt like not totally connected with the audience. They were laughing, but you know, it was, uh, it was a give and take, but here we are, we're in Chicago, it's fun, it's a great experience, and I'm having a great time, and we're going to be going home later, and we'll get right back into the swing of things, so, yeah, yeah, uh, what else, what else is going on, imagine I just did a two-minute pod, and <laughs> that's all I said, first of all, last week, I set up the I finally took the time to figure out how to use the AI to make myself sound like Paul McCartney and John Lennon. And dude, I am not going to lie. That was the coolest thing I've ever done in my life. Um, I was singing and I hate my voice when I sing. And I was just like, I tried singing some stuff, put it through the AI, dude. It sound it, it out came Paul. It, uh, but the weird, the funny thing at least is that I can better see why I sound like shit hearing him sing because I'm like, oh, he sounds like him, but he sounds bad. And so that was cool. Uh, and it was like the coolest thing is, at least with John Lennon, right, is I can't hit the notes or both of them. I can't hit the notes they can hit. So if I go like in my falsetto voice, I was like, ah, you know, I'm like, uh, honey pie, which sounds like shit, right? Put it through the AI their normal voice comes out like them their chest voice but yelling i'm gonna fucking put in a clip of it because i just think it's the coolest shit ever and so the ai makes my falsetto his normal voice fighting in the dance hall loud wonder if you'll ever know god ai is sick but yeah I, I wouldn't really make a song with it uh i would the coolest use case so far is just like writing my own songs or putting you know taking one i've already written and then i'll put it in their voice and then suddenly i'm like oh now i see why this is bad because i hear it in their voice and i'm like oh this isn't this isn't good. This isn't what it normally sounds like when they make songs. It sounds like, I don't know, it sounds like them if they were bad at making music. So I think that's a cool uh, use case, right? But God, AI friggin', you know, it scares me, dude. I mean, the video generations coming out, they're pretty cool. Some are like, you know, you, there's something cool about like, I'll see a video on Instagram and right away I'll be like, oh, AI generated video. Like there's something about it. It has this look. But, you know, that is only going to last so long. Uh, Tim was telling me Tyler Perry apparently abandoned making this studio, a $800 million studio, because he saw this video generation stuff. And he was like, oh, I'm not going to need sets. So, I don't know. There's part of me that doesn't love that. And there's part of me that's like, well, maybe I'm just being selfish, right? Like, Because like, the thing that about it that scares me isn't necessarily the uh, societal repercussions. It's more the, uh, oh, I can't make art anymore. I'd be like, or, or I guess I can, but the thing is like when AI becomes really good at it, it's like, oh, so nobody's going to think I'm good at it anymore. Not that people do, but that's the goal, right? So it is, you know, if, if it makes the best art in the world, if I'm a truly just an art lover, I think that should make me happy, right? I don't know. It's hard to say. Although there is something cool about knowing like things you love were made by a human, you know, it's kind of like, whoa, like it's like watching sports, right? It's like watching the, the, the greatest of human achievement. 
But I don't know. Maybe I'm just maybe I'm just uh, coping here. But they, I'm gonna put I, I I put the AI stuff in. Hopefully, I think it's so cool. The the singing. I think that uh, that is really cool. I um, my parents listen to every episode. So shout out mom and dad. Uh, it's fun. It's cool that th- that they are supportive, but it's also intimidating knowing that they listen to everything I'm saying. Sometimes you just want to let loose with the boys, you know. And mom and dad are in the corner, hands folded. No, but love you guys. Thanks, thanks for the support. Um, I wanted to talk briefly about uh, William Banks's uh, car w- car ride. Car William Banks is a comedian in Brooklyn. He's a friend of mine, and he's got this show, this reoccurring show. It's called Car World. Um, some people call it a cult. It's a, it's like this. I don't know what I would call it. But I'm just going to say I went to his most recent experience. So Car World is like this whole entire universe that he made up. And it's like Earth World. It's like our planet, but with worms. Dude, I can't even get into the the lore without like butchering it. But basically he had sex with a worm. And now he's the leader of Car World. And so I go to this thing. And it's basically what it is, is it's a simulation to make you feel like you're William Banks when he had sex with this worm called Carex. And so I go there. I got footage. I'm going to throw that footage into. It's pretty self-explanatory, I'd say. This is a silicon copy of Caroline's face uh, and then some boobs that we put on it. Carex has four boobs as depicted by the painting by the San Francisco father. And it was, like, really, like, I I think the most impressive part was just, like, the production value was great. I don't know what I was... I mean, the, he always goes all out for all the shows, like past shows. It's cool, dude. He gets everybody in a room, and then everybody's laughing because they're like, this is absurd, but they're also, like, playing along. So it'll, he'll be, like, doing, like, prayers. You know, he's wearing, like, a tuxedo, and he's leading us. And then... So we're all praying, and then, like, people... Like, one time, like, he had everybody spit in a cup when we first got there and then allegedly he drank it in front of us they could have switched it out but dude okay these events are wild right and so this simulation one it was called the sex ride so i feel like basically when i got there they were like do you want the safe version or do you want the like sexual version and i wanted the safe version i'm i'm sorry to tell you guys uh but yeah so basically you get there and they like walk you through this thing and they're like all right are you ready to experience the william banks experience and i'm like yeah and they like there's like a voiceover and you end up outside because william in real life at his job he got locked in a freezer and he like almost died but the police managed to come and save him or whatever but for the first part of the ride you're like they put you outside and then there's like tin foil walls that everybody pushes in like like people are carrying this cardboard with tin foil and it makes it feel like you're inside a freezer because it's freezing outside and then you know that there's like that's like a two minute thing and then you go in and they put a blindfold on you and you walk and you end up sitting in a car in this building and there's like trees like with pe- like people got like there's like rotating trees to make it feel like you're driving there's a projection on the windshield and then all of a sudden you get in this like fake car crash and car x this big worm it, it comes to the side of the car and she's staring you dead in the eyes and she's like pretending to have sex with you she's like touch the steering wheel and that means you're having sex with me. And so I would touch the steering wheel, and she'd be outside of the car like, ah. Oh. And I, it was crazy. And she's looking me dead in the eyes like she was very good at what she did, which is staying in character and stuff. But I wasn't even looking at her because I was like, oh, this is, like, awkward. But funny, but, like, just like, ah. Uh. And then William was in the back just, like, you know, like very lightly caressing my shoulders as if he was part of the worm. And so I guess the sex part of the ride would have been, like, he would have just touched – more i guess i don't know but it was very funny and creative and i always look forward to uh william's unique experiences and him expanding upon the car world lore uh you may have seen it go viral on tiktok before because it has and a lot of the comments it's either like what the hell is this or people playing along which is more fun but yeah 
that is uh one he's a staple of the Brooklyn comedy scene. He is just running this like insane ex- uh comedy show that doesn't end. He'll never break character. Like if you call it a comedy show or a cult, he'll be like, "What are you talking about? I had sex with Carex. I'm the leader of the worms." Like it's it's cool, dude. It's funny, it's cool. And uh you should check out his stuff because I do think he's very uh creative and he's worth looking into. So I solicited for advice in the last one, and I got two comments. One was Big Stinker, who I just, he, I I answered him in the comments. I thought that was more appropriate based on what he was looking for. But shout out, Big Stinker. I hope you're doing well. Uh, But here we go. Here's, Here's a good one. I'm trying to start a business, but I'm torn between doing something I want and am passionate about or doing something that is purely to generate income. Also, should I put all my effort into one thing I want to do, or should I try something I'm fairly confident in and do it well to gain experience? I mean, I guess personally, I would just do whatever you think is more fun and making will make you happy, right? Because like, if you have all the money in the world, but you're not happy, then that's like, you know, it's just like people like pretend like that would be cool. But obviously, like that wouldn't be because you've just admitted you're not happy. So then you can't pretend like, oh, I would be happy. It's like, no, the, the, the outline for what we've explained is that you're not happy. So I would say definitely do what you're passionate about, um, unless what you think will make you happy is money. But I mean, I don't know, like, what does that look like? Right? Like my buddy worked at this company that he said, if he stayed for a few years, he'd get 300 grand, but the, uh, like a year, but the, people that he worked with that were making that never were not at that office and they don't plan on retiring until they're like 50 or 60 and it's like i don't know what what good is that dude like do whatever you're you're stoked on uh what is it that you're happy on happy about like is it something that you're not going to make money in because like if you if you if you're happy I don't even know, dude. I, I, I'm I'm not going to pretend like I'm going to say something super original here because I am saying things that, uh, that you know, is pretty run-of-the-mill advice when it comes to a question like this. You know, I wish I could tell you something, like, super creative, right? Like, maybe just... Yeah, I don't get the last part of your question. Should I put all my effort into the one thing I want to do or should I try something I'm fairly confident in and do it well? Like for me personally, like I do, uh, I try shit out, dude. Like I'm trying this podcast out, right? Like we all have free time. Like, I mean, I'm assuming you're not that busy, right? Even if you have a nine to five, you got free time afterwards. So why not try multiple things? I don't know what you mean by the thing you're confident in. Like, what are you confident in? Like, yeah, just like maybe do both. Why can't you do both? And it, unless you got kids and you got a job and you don't got a lot of willpower and you sleep a lot and you'd rather go to the bars. All right, so Tim just called me and I have to go drop my shit off uh, in his room because uh, I'm about to get kicked out of this room and he extended his room. So, um, yeah, I'm going to take a look at this when I get home. And if it is, uh, if it is worth posting, I will, if I need to record more at home, two, (laughs) two settings, one pod, that could be cool. Um, so we'll see. Sorry if the advice wasn't that great. I say, do what you want to do in terms of, you know, follow what you're excited about. And then in the free time that you have, you can explore other options. But I mean, if you're doing what you love, that's what matters. Um, And tell me what it is that you do like doing, and then that'll help me easier understand what the context is of your question. And, uh, yeah, we're in Chicago. We're about to fly back. It's been great. It's cool here. It's, you know, Al Capone, meat, meat, Italian beef, and other kinds of meats are exciting here. That's cool. Uh, You know, I said I was going to do this, and I'm going to keep doing it until I stop. That's how you got to live life. Uh, I guess that's it for now. This was like, what, 12 minutes maybe? God. Ah! Bye.